Now it should come as no surprise to you that I love mock scrapes. Um, you can see most of the B-roll that we have of box coming in. They're working a vertical licking branch, a uh, vertical vine licking branch, vine mock scrape, whatever you want to call it. But it's something I've been doing for many years, been working on mock scrapes without scent for many years. Yeah, I'll urinate it at, at, at times, urinate in it at times myself. Um, but I'm talking about trying to create the most natural scrapes that you can and I love them you know first off before we go through all these different fails that happen every single year with mock scrapes really want to talk about uh, why I use mock scrape for one I use mock scrapes to take five or six trails combine them into one in a funnel location so that I can narrow down and define the movements of a mature buck possibly between bedding areas possibly between bedding and food around a, a water hole whatever it might be but I want to pinpoint some movement down so that I can hunt over it. And that's another uh, point. I like to be within bow shot of those mock scrapes. Another point that I'm really getting a collection of all the bucks in the area, a great sampling of 90, 95% of all the bucks in the area on that mock scrape. So whether it's the bucks that I'm trying to define for the movement by a stand location, or the bucks that I'm trying to actually identify and really get a good list of throughout the entire hunting season and before even, then a mock scrape is a valuable tool. And at the same time, it gives us a lot of cool B-roll footage because not only do we have mature bucks that hit it, but fawns and does, it's just a lot of fun and it's very reliable and it's something that deer, let alone bucks, use 365. Great option for you as a number one attraction that deer will hit year round. And so that's why I love mock scrapes and I've loved them for many years, written articles about them for many years. You can look back, there's an old article out there, I think I wrote it in 2008 probably, 2007, 2009. I probably published it on my site in 2010. But kind of corny title, but it was to pee or not to pee. And it was all about me peeing, urinating on a scent on a mock scrape and how I used mock scrapes. If you look it up on Google, just type in to pee or not to pee. Uh, you'll find that it was from at least 10 years ago that it was uh, published online and written uh, years before that. Now, there might be a better way out there for mock scrapes, but I've seen tens of thousands of mock scrapes on clients around the country. And like I've said before, I've seen 500 just on one parcel alone. And by the time I've used the dozens that I've had and all the mock scrapes that I've seen and all the scrapes, natural scrapes that I've seen on client lands times a thousand, you can imagine I've just about seen it all and it's pretty cool because mock scrapes are extremely powerful and uh, they can't be denied and there's a certain way that I found that they work the best and I'm always practicing with this and one of the ways I practice I get to go to client properties and I'll go to a client property that has had a hundred or two hundred or three hundred mock scrapes out and they've been using them for ten years or five years and so they've come to a conclusion of what works and when you get to compare notes with passionate hunters on a daily basis and you get to spend hours during the day and out in the field and during discussion time with those individuals then I get to learn a lot from them it's a it's a very valuable activity as far as my learning going forward I'd rather do that meet with people in the field than really you know scour the magazines that are out there today there's some good online content but you find in print, it's the value is lower and lower because I'm actually meeting people that are doing this, not for us for a living, but for their passion and for their love. And it's pretty cool we get to compare notes and I love doing that. It's uh, I'm not trying to brag about that or anything, it's just a fact. Um, this is something I'm into. I get to see it every day and then report back to you guys. And I have no reason to make this stuff up. I'm not selling a mock scrape. I'm not selling any kind of lures. Um, I'm not even selling a mock scrape book or anything like that. Uh, you can choose not to watch these videos or watch them, but you know what? This is what I found that works, and if you follow it, I know you'll you'll uh, find success with your mock scrapes, and especially if you avoid these seven things right here. Number one, commercial scent. There could be a man-made scent that is better than deer scent on the market, but I just haven't found it. And it's hard to imagine, too, because I'll use a licking branch, and every deer that goes by rubs its preorbital gland scent on that branch and deer have the ability to smell those individual deer on that branch so lots of scent lots of scent that accumulation that accumulates over time 
I don't know if a deer can smell dozens that have been there in the last several days or if they can only smell 24 hours, 36 hours. There's probably some good scientific data out there for how far back a buck can actually smell or a doe or a fawn in general. But I do know that they're constantly coating that licking branch with their natural scent. And if I use a man-made scent, I could potentially be washing away or masking that scent of those dozen deer or two dozen deer, or three dozen deer that have walked by and freshened that licking branch and left their calling card and their mark on that branch. And I just don't want to do that or I don't want to take the chance. And I can see they're using those licking branches, a lot of licking branches right now. Dylan and I were out on the Minnesota property. We put the first mock licking branch there, mock scrape on the property that was May 11th. On May 15th or 16th, it was right around there, just four or five days later, I had a really nice buck come in. Of course, they're in Velva right now. You can just tell with big bases and a lot of growth, they're gonna be something, big body, uh, really nice buck. But then I had a string of bucks using it. Uh, we probably had 15 or 20 clips out of that just over, my, this is just since May 11th. Um, we're not even to the end of May yet. I believe it's May 28th right now. So just over the course of a few weeks, we had bucks hitting it right away and they're using it. They're leaving their scent. Does are coming by leaving their scent. And this is just not a mock scrape. No scent at all. We didn't make any scent. I didn't even pee on that one or urinate. Um, so we just made the mock scrape. And I'll go through really quick. I like to clear out a diameter area of three foot to four foot in diameter with a rake. I use a vine that is approximately five feet. It's three quarters of an inch to one inch in diameter. If, you, if vines aren't readily available in your area, you could use jack pines up north, beech branches, white oak branches, whatever bucks love to rub on and scrape under is a great branch. Just keep the same three quarter inch to one inch diameter, about five feet long. I hang that belly high and I hang that from a branch with a rope up above. I can tie a rope between two trees, hang the, hang the vine from there. I do not attach the vine directly to the line. It just hangs, there's usually a rope. If that line was eight feet up and I needed two feet of rope, I just tie that rope to the end of the vine, tie it to the, the rope up top and it swings. You want it to freely swing because that's natural. You don't want it to be stiff. And then they also break a lot more because they're stiff, it's rigidity. Bucks are working against it, it breaks that vine or branch or whatever you're using. So pretty easy to make these. It's in a flat area, completely flat area, and it's right on the deer trail. So you want it so that when deer walk by, they just about have to move their head in order to keep from hitting the branch. But commercial scent, there might be another scent out there that could beat actual natural scent from deer, but I'm, I'm just not sure that there really is. Um, and you know, there's a lot of cool attractants out there. I've seen people actually use peanut butter where legal. Um, even, even a contraption where they can screw down to the tree and the peanut butter scent will bring deer in. I heard of someone shooting a nice buck like that that was coming in and, and licking the peanut butter. Um, they have urines out there. I, I'm not really sure on the legitimacy of where those urines come from. Uh, a lot of them are messy. I, I think I've told the story before. I, it was a deer scent back in the 80s and it's still around today. And I didn't have a lot of money at all. I was probably 17, 16, mowing lawns for money in between playing sports. And um, I spent my money on a $14 bottle of urine. And I went out and let's try a little bit. A little bit more will probably be better, a little bit more. All of a sudden the bottle's done. I only hunted one night, one sit. And I felt pretty guilty for spending that money. There's a product out there, Wild Carrot. Um, and I know my, my friends over at the Breaking Point TV and Black Stamp Media, they use it. And it's just something where it's a sleeve or there's urine, you can pull it out, you hang it in a tree, last until the next big rain. That's a pretty cool product, you know, something like that. I just choose, maybe I'm lazy, but I like making the mock scrape and just leaving it alone. That mock scrape we just made in, in uh, Minnesota, that should last the entire season. We have a mock scrape that uh, Diane and I built in 2014 and still around today. We need to actually replace the branch, work on the, uh, the uh, big box elder branch that's holding it up. And from there, um, we'll continue it in that exact same location. It's been pretty cool. Commercial scent, I think that's where a lot of people fail only because they put all their faith in that scent and not actually creating and making the mock scrape correctly in the first place. Too high. This is a traditional horizontal branch, chest high, neck high, somewhere around in this range. And there's rigidity there. A buck can push against it. It's stiff. They can leave their preorbital gland scent, but too high for fawns, sometimes too high for does. And it's off to the side because it's a horizontal branch coming out of a tree. So typically it's not something that a lot of deer are actively participating in the mock scraping process because it's off to the side 
It attracts more mature bucks only at face level. I like a vertical licking branch at belly high and partly belly high because I want every fawn and every doe that goes by to participate in this too. And I can determine exactly where that hangs. And again, I want it hanging directly over the deer trail that I expect to shoot a deer on. Number three, too many. A lot of people think one branch is great. Let's have four hanging below the line or five or 500 on 200 acres. Well, guess what? At some point you dilute the power of one. I want every deer coming within those five or six trails to come and hit that vertical licking branch and leave their scent on it and none other. I don't want to take that amount of scent and spread it between four or spread it between three. A lot of times bucks don't come in and they take 15, 20 seconds to work this one, this one, this one, this one, and on down the line, they're working one. Even to the point, if I have a natural scrape 20 feet off to the side that does not bring them by where I want to see them and shoot them, I cut that down. So it's not that you're gonna go through the woods and cut down every natural scrape, but I really wanna pinpoint the movements of a mature buck to the mock scrape right in front of my tree stand, right at bow shot distance, and that's the best way to do it. You don't want to dilute it by adding more. Adding more, more is not necessarily better. And that applies to a lot of things in life, but when it comes to mock scrapes, you want one single powerful branch that collects all the deer scent that walk by, and you want that right in front of your stand location, and only one. One is better than two, is better than five, and certainly better than 10 or more. A lot of times, mock scrapes are off to the side. What I mean by that, the deer trail is going right through here, the mock scrape's over there. Kind of like a traditional horizontal licking branch. It's off to the side. And I don't want that off to the side. Again, I want that right directly on the trail. I want the deer to travel, and that's why a vertical branch, why I started using vertical branch, created that, because I wanted to determine where that buck came and made a, scra a scrape, not left to the whims of a horizontal licking branch off to the side or hanging in a certain way off a trunk or on the edge of a food plot. I want to determine exactly where a buck walks in and out of a food plot, into a water hole, into a bedding area, along a cruising bench or funnel, and really for that shot placement of a bow. And of course, on all my mock scrapes, I first pick the tree that I'm going to hang a, tree, a trail camera on to take a picture of that mock scrape and really be able to get that inventory of those bucks in the area. So really make sure it's hanging down right in front of your stand location. Number five, too many horizontal branches. Sure, that's traditional, but it's not the best. And the reason I like these vertical mock scrapes is the mock scrapes on my client parcels visiting around the country that I've seen that are used the most, the most perennial, are those vertical licking branches. Again, we have one that's been used since 2014, and I'd have to go back. We probably have one that's been used longer than that. But the bottom line is they'll be used over and over and over again, and you can just replace the branch if you need to. A horizontal licking branch always fails eventually. It'll either break in half, the tree grows, there's more branches that come out, cut it off. Whatever the reason, the horizontal branch licking branch fails. And when you can have a branch that's there and used for 6, 10, 12, 15 years, and you just keep it going, imagine the power of that mock scrape versus a natural licking branch in the area that is failing after three or four years or one year or six months, whatever it might be. The mock scrape licking branches, vertical licking branches last a lot longer. And from what I see, that's what bucks naturally use the longest. Of course, there's a lot of horizontal branches out there. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the ones that last the longest and they're, and they're the most perennial and the most powerful. A lot of times they're vertical. Some of the scrapes, first scrapes that I found in this, I always go back to this when I was 16 years old, might even been 15 years old, but it was near Clarkston, Michigan, Independence Oaks County Park, private land next to that. Just a little 10 acre parcel of building sites that we used to go, go back onto. Probably weren't even supposed to be there. But we found a huge area of scrapes back under some vines on a little knoll in a stand of oaks, and it was incredible. Actually, when I shot a deer and someone actually came out to help, we showed them that area, and that's what they explained to us what it was. We didn't even know. We were just completely inexperienced hunters, no one in our family hunted, um, my brother Kevin and I. He was two years younger than I. So that was a pretty cool area. And I always think back to that, those vines hanging down and the scrapes you produce and those vertical vines, really cool. You want, I love that five foot length, three quarter inch to one inch in diameter because there's enough weight and rigidity for them to wipe their preorbital gland scent from their eyes. I've seen some ribbons 
you know, just like marking flagging ribbon people have used. Well, that's cool if a buck happens to walk by and hit it, you know, once a month or something. But I'm talking about daily use that can soak up the scent, that actually has a rigidity that they can wipe those preorbital glands scent on. That's why you need the weight. You need that weight too. Now we use high quality trail cameras. A lot of people ask me, well, what about that blowing around in the wind? It's just free swinging on that rope. Rope could be three inches long, could be three feet long, could be 10 feet long. Bottom line is it might blow around a little bit during the wind, but we use quality trail cameras, Exodus trail cameras. And if you use a quality trail camera, they're not gonna pick up those movements and continually getting blank pictures. We don't get blank pictures on our mock scrapes because we use quality cameras. I think on some of the cheaper ones that are just using motion instead of heat too, I think they're picking that up. And, um, and the sensitivity is too great because it's not that much in depth. It's not that complex. They're, if you're using a combination of movement and heat or heat, then it takes a lot to trip that off. But when it does trip, it's on an animal and you get that a high percentage of the time. But bottom line is whether it's you don't want that mock scrape blowing around in front of a cheap camera and getting lots of blanks or you want to be able to collect deer scent you have to have some weight and rigidity in order for deer to rub their preorbital glands on there and leave that scent and again it has to be low enough for fawns to participate too because i'm not even sure that deer could tell the difference between fawn scent and an older doe or or buck whatever it might be you want those fawns hitting it we have a video out there if you just look up fawns dancing and scrapes you just type that in on YouTube, you'll find it, but it's these fawns dancing around and they're smelling that licking branch that was only a few days old. Another one Dylan and I put out, I think in 2016. Can you imagine the sense that those deer were trying to process all those other deer scent that had left the preorbital gland set on that branch? I think they get excited, they didn't even know how to handle it. And you can see by them dancing around, they were having a lot of fun, it was pretty cool. But it's got enough, enough weight to collect scent, be low enough to collect scent, and finally, number seven needs to be naturally hung. What I mean by that is I've seen vertical licking branches that are a foot and a half long and then a rope and it's tied to a cable. Cables are bad. Can you ever imagine a, a buck getting wound up in a metal cable? They can break that rope and get away, but I would never want to hang something that a buck can actually hang themselves on like a wire cable going between trees. I do not recommend that in any ways. Plus, I like to have something natural looking like camouflage rope. We have a yellow nylon rope on one of our mock scrapes, and uh, but it blends in with the branches, the trunk. It's just not something I'd want to use all the time. A bunch of nylon yellow rope, not for me. I'd rather use camel rope, something that blends in. Some of the best scrapes that we have are pretty cool is we actually hang them through branches on the, um, on the tree itself. So you might have another branch between the actual licking stick and where it's tied off up above. And every time a buck hits that or a doe or fawn, hits that vertical licking branch. They're moving that branch around. I don't know if they think they're tough, if they think it's more natural, but if it's more hidden like that, and especially if you have that longer vertical licking branch of five feet, approximately five feet, then to me it's a lot more natural and it's blending in. And uh, if you can think of these seven areas right here, you know, not using a commercial scent or not relying on it, making sure they're not the bottom of the licking branch isn't too high you're not using too many that's a big sin that i see a lot of people use that it's right directly over a trail not off to the side you want every deer that walks by to hit their head on it vertical licking branches are by far the best putting them right in front of your stand location making sure they're heavy enough to collect scent needs to be naturally you know looks natural and i'm gonna leave you another number eight that's not on here but number eight Ask yourself, ask yourself, can, can you shoot it? Kind of like a water hole. If you place a water hole out and it's not in front of a bow stand, that's a big sin. If you place a mock scrape out, it's not in front of a bow stand with the ability to put a trail camera on it. Big sin in my book too. Can you shoot to it? Is it that close? Can you shoot it from your bow stand? These eight areas, really take a good hard look at that and follow we have a mock scrape playlist i believe it's up to 27 28 videos now there's lots of tips and tips and tactics in their strategies how to define deer movement how to use those for defining deer for getting inventory of bucks uh, to seeing those summer scouting bucks compared to fall uh, scouting looking at those for the ratio of daylight pitchers to nighttime pitchers on those mock scrapes, understanding how your impact of your hunting is diminishing 
the uh, the overall huntability of your property every time you step foot on the property. I want to see you make some mock scrapes this year. They're awesome. I've been using these vertical mock scrapes for a long time. I hope you follow the other information about these mock scrapes on the YouTube channel or in my uh, on my uh, website and the articles. But they're not only very helpful for getting a buck right in front of your tree stand, but they're just a lot of fun. And I urge you to try them if you haven't tried them. And if you're having any type of failures or lack of success, look back to these eight points right here. And I bet you there's a few of them that you can hang your hat on. And hopefully you can turn it around this hunting season.